Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. I've decided to move some parts in the tech tree, specifically the docking ports. They used to be in specialized construction. I've moved them down. There's the Apollo docking system, APAS, and NASA docking system all based on the stock model of a docking port, and also that shielded one. And they used to be in specialized construction. I moved them down into advanced construction because we have station modules here, the station node, station supply module, station airlock, which won't make any sense unless we have docking ports. And of course, we do already have command modules here. And so it made sense to have them at the same tier, even if they're not in the same technology, uh, just for functionality's sake. So I moved them down and instantly in RP2000, all docking ports are priced the same because functionally they're the same, right? There's no distinguishing feature between any of these. They're in fact the same model. And so if we priced them differently, a person would naturally go for the cheaper one. Uh, so they're all 2000, that's uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, just out of logic. Uh, the small docking port, by the way, the propellant only one is down here in miniaturization. It costs more to unlock, but it costs less ultimately. So um, that that one is a little bit different because hopefully you'll roleplay that properly, but uh, we've left that be. I haven't marked it yet. I, I'm sort of indecisive whether I should bring it up to 2000 as well or not. So while the others will have the, what you got, a little green mark that says place part placed and priced by RP2000, the small docking port right now does not. Uh, we'll see. We really need to get to those docking ports because, well, we eventually want to do our first docking contract. So if we take a look at the contracts and milestones, first docking, the only thing we need is something with a docking node. So we just need a docking port for that. And then we can do that in first space station would follow, of course. Um, also, the Lynx spacecraft with the aeroshell on, on currently does not allow for Kerbals to EVA. If we have the aeroshell off, it does. So we could... Well, we'd need a docking port anyway. No, no matter what you do, we need a docking port. So uh, we could, I was about to say, we could dock the orbital version to a non-orbital version that's acting as a space station or airlock and do it like that. But we'd still need a docking port for that unless we attach them ahead of time in the, but then we'd want to undock in order to deorbit. So yeah, no matter what, we want docking ports in order to do the first EVA actually. Uh, so we're not going to Gemini this, and in real life I don't think they would either. So these days we don't uh, just pop up, open the hatch, and poke out uh, anymore. So that's not how that works. However, uh, we could start the upgrade that leads us to be able to perform EVAs. We, I think we have enough money. Though the crewed missions are obviously very expensive. To that end, we should pick up some more missions to do. And so we could still do this Lunar Impactor thing, apparently. We might as well pick it up. And successful re-entry, I mean, we might as well, if they gotta let us repeat it, we might as well get it over with. And otherwise, crude flyby and landing of the moon is a little bit beyond us at the moment. Mars flyby and Mercury flyby we could probably do. We did the Venus one, but... Our antenna range, maybe. Then science day from space around Venus and the surface of Venus. Oh dear. Uh, science day from space around the moon, I think should be easy. We'll just take it as bonus funds. We need the money, basically. We could go all touristy on this business. IG adventure, apparently. We just need them to pass out. Uh, but... Yeah, that's only 11,000. I don't think it's worth it. I mean, that's realistic and all, but then I got paid that much, but it's a lot to bother with. Anyway, so first thing I want to do is this position a satellite in a polar orbit of Earth and bring it back down, successful re-entry of that. And then maybe we'll try to, well, maybe we should do Lunar Impactor first. We've got stuff that can do that. Let's try to do that, that quickly, that and the science from the moon. Maybe we can optimize it a little bit better now that we have more technology. 
As far as our probe goes though, it's tough to see how we can optimize this any better. This is as bare bones as it's ever going to get, I think. Um, we could seek to get new science. That might be a good idea. We don't actually have any science queued, I should do that. Um, there's always the goo. Oh, science junior. Well, that was going further than I was originally intending. And that's something I would like to recover. So maybe for our probe going into polar orbit and recovering that, we could send the science junior. But for now, I don't think I want to do that for the moon. So we'll just leave this moon probe B and go with what we know is possible with this and the little reaction wheel in the CubeSat. But we'll probably change up the launcher or since we have better engines. The better engines are more expensive though. Well, okay. I don't know if we can replace the ether engine. It is pretty good. But darn it, those two sky forces at the bottom. These two get 285 second ISP in vacuum. We can do better than that. But I, I want to watch out for the price here, which also implies the time to build it. This SE2020 is very expensive compared to two sky forces. There are possibilities if I want to unlock a new engine, but I don't really want to pay for the unlock cost of anything new. So it might be that this Delta thing is just the best. We should just go with what we've got and have used before. Yep. Uh, somehow the, the logic just works out that way. We have more advanced technology, but this Given that we want a very small rocket, this is actually not too bad. <laughs> so there's no point trying to optimize a very small rocket, I guess. So we'll build this. Oh yes, uh, hold on, hold on. Let's get some new science here. We eventually want advanced construction for the docking port, so I'm gonna pick up general construction. That allows us to do 20 layers of MLI, which will be good for when we do want cryogenics to last for quite a while. So that's probably the most useful thing in this sector. These others, oh, well, struts are always struts, but yeah, I think the MLI layers are the most significant thing in general construction right now. Unless you want to use the Mark 1 crew cabin, which is fine. Though, uh, well, I mean, it's not Rated for space? It depends on whether you're going to abuse... Well, it says rated for Leo re-entry, so I might need to reprice that. Yep, I think that is not priced right, given the fact that it is Leo capable. Okay, let's line up with the moon. I really have to get my custom windows set up for MechJeb. Okay, that will be good enough. Let's see if the engines work. SAS on, throttle up, ignition. We've got two of them, and launch. All right, here we go again with uh, this sort of mission plan. Hey, if they're gonna pay us to do it, we might as well do it, get paid, and use that for other things. So yeah, basically, we would get more efficiency with an engine that doesn't use kerosene HTP or, you know, using kerosene oxygen or methane oxygen or something. But it's not worth the extra price uh, because we're launching something so small that the extra efficiency doesn't help anything. You know, the extra efficiency would get us the ability to launch a bigger payload but we don't need to, so... Lots of G-forces, though. And... Ignition and fairing set, that's fine. Shut down. Uh, everything out. Make sure we're all communicative and charging. Alright, so... 
We can probably use the other engine again. I still need to fix its plume though. Um, yeah, I still got an ignition. Uh, ever since I added KSB Interstellar, we've got this thing called KSB Inter uh, Interstellar Magnetic Nozzle. I don't know what it does or why it's on every engine. Uh, it doesn't matter what engine it is, but it is on every engine. But I have no idea what that does. <laughs> I don't recall that being a thing in previous versions of KSB Interstellar in that it seems to add it to everything. But anyway, it didn't interfere with the functionality of it. I'll just go straight into it like that. We have way more delta V than we need. I guess we could have optimized and made a much smaller launcher. But anyway, this gave uh, protection in case an engine went out or something. Okay, nope, we don't need the RCS still going there. Next stage. With our 100 Newton thruster here. Okay, let's take a look at the map and see when we get our encounter. We don't have backward facing thrusters on this stage. I don't know why we just lost the encounter. Oh, it's drifting there. Oh, 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 now we've got an encounter. Now we don't. Oh, shucks. Well, okay. Let's time warp. Okay, now it shows an encounter. Okay, now we're cr uh, crashing into it. Okay. Okay, we're gonna watch those fluctuations in power. We should we're spinning all over the place. At some point, we need to be pointing at the sun. Okay, so we are in lunar SOI. We should have like ejected something so that we could that that would survive like an egg like Luna 9 so that we could get science data from surface of the moon while also impacting the moon would have been nice but okay we can't have everything I suppose well we could have maybe but all right hmm yeah we could have done something anyway didn't think about that so Gravity scan. Actually, that's new over over Mare Imbrium of the Moon because it's new biome. All right, I really, really need us to be pointing at the sun. Oh, not enough electric charge. Okay, we need to allow partial on this antenna. Okay, let's try transmitting again. Okay. And we filled the contract. All right, so now we are still on a crash course, so that's good. I will I, I will keep Kerbalism in mind, by the way, while transmitting science. Of course, Kerbalism does that completely differently, and I'm aware of that. It might be easier to, I don't know, do some Kerbalism, some aspects of Kerbalism compatibility first and then other aspects later, like temporarily turn off some of the features of Kerbalism until we can verify that the more complicated stuff is compatible. I think because I've kept the everything else stock alike uh, as far as the transmitting of science and how science works, hopefully, um, except the contracts still don't require the scientific instruments. That's a little bit weird. But anyway, uh, since I've done most of that the stock way, hopefully Kerbalism will just sort of slot in on the science transmission aspect of things. All the comms is still stock comms. Okay, here we go for our impact. I mean, if we slow down uh, here, we'll try. If we slow down just the right amount, we can impact. Well, I guess if, if it wants vessel destroyed, it really means it. And probably we can't like destroy just the engine, but have the probe core intact for transmitting science. So I don't think I can play any games with that. Oh, well. Yeah, it probably expects the probe core to be destroyed.
Okay, it's satisfied and hopefully we don't get any more. Wait. Oh gosh, this Lunar Impactor contract never fulfills when I impact the... Uh... Oh no, it did. It did. It did. It's just because the, the window popped up. Okay, okay, good. Because I saw the notification thing flashing. Alright, so it did fulfill it. All is good. We do need to line something on the moon to get more science though, but next thing we're going to do is do the polar orbit combined with successful re-entry, and I think we'll launch a science junior with that. Okay, so here's the rocket that I'm going to use for the science junior launch. We have the science junior right there with a heat shield and everything. We've got little tanks of hydrazine uh, and thrusters to make sure it can orient itself and also deorbit itself. I think we've got enough, but it is a sort of a push because our or intended orbit is 1,382 kilometers. So that's pretty high and polar. So we have to watch out for that. And our launcher has 11,000, so that's good. Uh, so I think that will be enough to get to that orbit. Uh, as far as deorbiting goes, I hope these little tanks, because I can't check the Delta V right now, they're just RCS. So I'm hoping that that's going to be enough. We have one of the payload adapter with control core parts there, uh, tweak scaled down, which means a little bit less electric charge, probably a little bit less cost as well. Uh, that's not a huge problem in this case. And we have a parachute. So obviously. And I've reduced the amount of ablator to half on the Soyuz heat shield. And we have a somewhat awkward rocket. We have college rockets on the side. They're just the 08,000 uh, model rockets. And then, oops. And then we have a SE2006V which is a kerosene oxygen engine that gets 357 vacuum ISP. I didn't use the more efficient engine 2 vacuum because that has a lot more thrust and we don't really need that and this is comparatively cheaper I think. Let me just verify that. Uh, 524 compared to 930 but that one has uh, twice the thrust so fair enough. And of course we have thrusters on this stage because it'll have to circularize in theory. And we have three Reaver 1 engines and these are kerosene oxygen engines as well. Not the best efficiency, uh, 184 kilonewtons, but we had them unlocked so I decided it'd be good to use them. And they're not that expensive. It was a push between those and the SE20 uh, 2020s these guys and the main reason I went with those is because it has a little bit more sea level ISP and that reduced how many we would need to get off the ground basically so even though this has better vacuum ISP I'm mainly relying on the upper stage to do a lot of the delta V so all right Besides, I generally don't like to use two of the shear strut engines on any rocket just because, well, I designed those, so <laughs> let's see how it does and we'll have to make sure to line up with the Internet Orbit because it does have a specified longitude of ascending node this time. Okay, here we are and the orbit, the Internet Orbit is that one and we will head south. That's fine. That means we can launch in daylight. Sorry, citizens of Miami, we'll be flying right over you. Okay, that should be close enough. All right. So, staging is all wrong. <laughs> uh, let's see, that that's the wrong fairing there. And we definitely want to light them before the launch clamps release. Okay, now we're ready to go. SAS on, throttles up, ignition. Got three engines, and launch. So we are heading south. We have accumulated some data units on these engines. Currently, we've got ignition failure rate of 0.86% and it's a 4 minute max burn time, well, rated burn time. On the upper stage engine, it's got a 7 minute rated burn time. 
And what are we actually using it for? Six minutes. We're good. I think we'll be switching stages before doing the main fairings. Uh, we should probably turn more vigorously. Yeah. Yes. Definitely not NASA approved. All right, separation and ignition. Okay. And fairing separation. All right. We are getting charge. We better watch out for that. This only has the surface mount antennas. They're, um... There's one right there and one over this side. So we'll keep this side as our periapsis side, burn to the full height on the opposite side, and then circularize on the opposite side. And that's the plan, anyway. We can observe the materials bay now. Only 15 science, though. Less than I thought. I'll even arm the parachute. No downside to that, I don't think. Well, let's check our lines here. Pretty tenuous back to the Cape. Uh, that's somewhat worrisome. Might have wanted to go a little bit higher initially. I don't know if we're going to pick anything else up here. Our antennae aren't strong enough to communicate through the moon. Well, the moon's on the opposite side anyway, so that would be futile. Well, let's see. 1,382. Okay, well, 1,417 is what we're at right now. And we'll take that for now. I don't know how accurate it wants us to be. We seem to be recharging. Sun is sort of over there. And we need to get comms at our apoapsis. Which should be possible. All sorts of stuff over here. It's possible we can use this engine to deorbit, which would be nice. Um, we're pretty much in line, so that's good too. Just mainly the periapsis and apoapsis accuracy here. Okay. Ignition. And shut down. We can use the RCS for the... Wow, the RCS is not that powerful. <laughs> uh, I take it back. Oh, this is going to take forever. Oh no, it's. I think it says it's done. Alright, that was close enough for it. Okay, so it's happy with that orbit. Now we just have to splash down. Or uh, land, either way. Landing might be better. I think we can keep the heat shield like that. Splash down, maybe we have to dump the heat shield or we won't float. I'm not sure. And, uh, maybe... West coast somewhere. So yeah, we can just deorbit right now. We have comms and everything. Next time, I think we are going to try and send a Kerbal up again, but we might have to time warp through some some construction of the astronaut complex as well as some technology. Let's see. Okay, uh, deorbit burn. All right, I think we will take that. It's a little bit harsh. Maybe we'll lift that periapsis up a little bit. We need. We probably need stronger hydrazine thrusters here. We're losing electric charge. I'll take the 60-ish kilometers, close to 60 kilometers. All right, normal. We're just gonna dump this stage now. All right, good enough. All right, thrusters prepared. Okay, yes, it is free. I did not pick the wrong node. And we set to surface negative. That thing off. Okay, well, let's time warp. 
Hopefully we get some sunlight before we lose electric charge. Hmm. It doesn't look like it. We're gonna be pretty dark. So, um, I'm gonna preset it to go sundown, which will get us electric charge. Well, get us electric charge when the sun comes out, anyway. But this is not the orientation for re-entry, so we have to be careful. Okay, it's on persistent rotation. We are out of power. But we are now regaining power, and just in time, too. Uh, so, I'll wait until it gets the power. Oh, wait. No comms. Uh-oh. Mm, are we going to get comms before we hit the atmosphere? I can cheat. Smart ASS doesn't care one bit about comms, <laughs> I think. Uh, but we could also rely on it orienting itself properly because the heat shield side would tend to want to go down and the RCS thrusters are weak. Let's see. I think we'll risk it. Let's see. Okay, we, well, we have comps now. So, okay, I'll just take advantage of that. Okay. Full on re-entry here. We are getting charred up later, that's nice. Well, we're basically coming to a set standstill right here, so where are we? Mexico! We overshot a bit, but okay. Okay, we have parachutes. We don't have comms. We have parachutes. And yeah, that's probably a safe speed. Bit disappointed about the science value of the science junior, but it's fine. Ooh, it looked a little bit hard there, but okay. Recover vessel. Uh, I think we have to do normal recovery for the contract, probably. I'm not No, I guess it only required landing or splashing down, so it probably already counted, assuming it counted right. It looks like it, because it's no longer in Kerbal Alarm Clock. Okay, well, got some science, got some funds back, and all we have left is transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of the moon. We don't have a huge amount of funds, frankly. Um, we do have some science to work with. And um, I'll just go straight through. So we're doing general construction right now. I'll just queue up advanced construction as well to get the docking ports. Because at least then we can make a rudimentary station with a Lynx spacecraft. Uh, you know, so we'll have the unshelled links as the basically airlock and dock to it with uh, orbital of a properly protected links let's put it that way so that will be the plan for a space station and maybe we can get do that next time or we should do that landing on the moon and get that science next time plenty of moon science after all so maybe we should land a science junior on the but then we won't recover it i don't know how many points that ends up being so we'll see but anyway that's queued up and we'll do one of those things in the next video so with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time